Lo-fi plugins, you gotta love them. Trap Tendo. What is going on guys, DJ Av here, back at it again, and we're checking out Sketch Cassette 2, which is by Abriant DSP, which is a fairly new company I haven't heard much from, so I definitely wanna shine a light on newer companies so they can get the credit when it's due. So with that being said, uh, it works for both Windows and Mac and all DAWs. The DAW of choice in this video will be the MPC software. So we get to hear that nice crispy lo-fi versus the MPC's lo-fi. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video. And I'm gonna weigh in with my pros and cons. The link will be in the description box, uh, just in case you wanna check it out. It is an affiliate link that will help support this channel, but try it before you buy. You might be surprised. Let's begin. So here we are. We're using a DAW inside of a DAW. So I have Ableton Live 11 hosting the MPC software as a VST plugin. And I'm using the MPC as a controller. More about that in the future. But I want to bring up this right here because Sketch Cassette 2, it has a very unique UI as in it's hand drawn <laughs> and it has a lot of charisma. We're not here for that. Let's hear how it sounds. I'm gonna play the demo track here. So it's nice and wide open and I will compare it to the, the MPC plugin or the lo-fi plugin that I love. So let's turn it on. how open it is while it's bypassed. So my early impressions about Sketch Cassette 2 is the presets are banging. And if you notice, the tapes actually change too while you're going through uh, many of the different types of uh, tapes. And I, I can really dig it. And I think it has to do with, you know, type one, type two, type four, bypass. Let's go back to type four again, uh, standard. Yeah, so you can see the different tapes. And we're gonna play with some of the different features here. So we're gonna go through type one to type two and type. And then you start to see why I like uh, tape cassette lo-fi versus other types of lo-fi here so we also if i was to go from like type one uh the, there's some things that i would like to point out here uh you can have a different types of age which is new use and worn you 
you can change like the hiss. You can bring the hiss here. You, you just have that. It's like a looping white noise, and that's pretty cool. Um, you have different types of saturation. And the differences aren't like subtle either. They're, they're noticeable differences. And I'm seeing that you have different waveforms here, which I'm very curious about uh, because I did see uh, within a lot of the presets that there's a way that you can uh, set up different kinds of movement or modulation of some sorts. And I don't know how to do it. I do apologize. Uh, we will figure it out in a later video or whatever. But, you know, in this review, I'm just checking it out for what it is. Uh, and then you have like dropouts and tits. Intensity. Now, if you really want to get the lo-fi thing popping properly, you definitely don't want to stereo widen it too much or at all. I would keep it mono. Uh, that's just a hot tip, just in case you are wondering how something like a funk genre would work or even lo-fi hip hop. I think it's just mono altogether just uh, speaks like the 80s, basically early 80s if you're into uh, old samplers. If you're not, then, you know, I just want to give you that old head knowledge that a lot of the the first type of samplers were mono. And that is a way that you would want to rock if you want to do that. So, uh, but the compression is very interesting. A lot of these uh, features set themselves apart from a lot of the other lo-fi plugins that are out there, especially lo-fi tape plugins. Could do some really cool stuff with the compression. Oh, so I did figure out if you click on mode here, you can change what you're doing and applying it, and you'll see if you hit like a uh, FM, you see frequency modulation or whatever, so you can then modulate some of the depth and flutter. And then the more you bring it in, you get to see how it flips through it. And I, it sounds a little chorusy. Uh, and you you have these different waveforms, I presume. <laughs> that you can apply in there, and I'm I'm assuming that if you turn tempo seek on, then that just brings it to the tempo of the track or whatever. So that's pretty good. Then you can turn flanging off. Yeah, <laughs> this is pretty damn solid, I would say. So, tell me how you feel about this video. I definitely want to hear from you guys in the comment section. Uh, do you like it? Do you dislike it? I definitely wanna uh, hear some of the feedback and whatnot, especially uh, this company. I'm pretty sure they will put things in consideration down in the future. Uh, one of the biggest pros is, well, it's not a huge gamble. I know a lot of lo-fi plugins these days, they can be very expensive and this one is actually pretty cheap right now, at least on the sale. I never seen it above like, I don't know, 50 bucks, but yeah, I could be wrong about that. Uh, the second thing, since it is lo-fi tape and it's a cassette tape type plugin, I actually like this a little bit more than some of the other uh, lo-fi plugins that are out there. I know a lot of people will say that Isotope Vinyl, which is free, is better or whatever the case may be because it's free maybe but uh with that yeah you you get a different taste palette cons um i, I really don't see any cons i guess if it was a con if you're not into lo-fi then this plugin won't be for you do i 
give this the stamp of approval. Well, indeed I do. Indeed.